In the next two lessons, we are going to have a look at how we can use Venn diagrams to determine our probabilities. In today's lesson, we are going to do an abstract example. Before we start with the example, I'm going to remind you of a few things. A Venn diagram can represent probabilities or it can represent the number of outcomes for each event. In my explanation, I'm going to use probabilities. Firstly, we have the complete circle A, and this represents the probability of event A happening. Then we also have the full circle B, which represents the probability of event B. And then, of course, we also have the part where the two circles intersect, and this represents the probability of A and B, or their intersection. And when we then exclude this intersection, we have only A and only B. Then I will also remind you about the difference between AND, which is intersection, and OR, which is union. Circle A consists of two parts, the only A part and the part where it shares with B. The same goes for B, there's the part that is only B, and then the part that it forms together with A. If I now want to determine the probability of A and B, I will use the part where I marked both of them, and that is the intersection. If I, however, want to determine the probability of A or B, it is the only A part, only B part, and where both of them are. And this is the union of A and B. Let's go and have a look at a few examples. Example 1. Two events A and B are such that the probability of A and B is 0, 0,08, the probability of A and not B, 0, 0,32, and the probability of B, 0, 0,2. Determine the probability of A or B. To answer a question like this up to now, we would have simply used the definitions and each definition's formula. The difference here is that we now have the probability of A and not B. So as soon as the combination is not the normal A and B, a Venn diagram will help you. Here we were given a probability for A and B to happen, and that means there's an intersection. So I'm going to start off drawing a Venn diagram where the two circles intersect. When completing your Venn diagram, it is important to always start at this intersection. And here we were given that the probability of A and B is 0, 0,08. We were also given that the probability of B is 0, 0,2. This is the probability for the full circle B, and that means to get the part that is only B, we need to take the 0, 0,2 and subtract 0, 0,08, and that will give us 0, 0,12. And lastly, we were given the probability of A and not B as 0, 0,32. So now we need to determine where this A and not B is. For this, I'm going to start off marking A, and that is only A, and A with the intersection of B. And then not B is everything except for B circle, and that is then only A, and also outside the two circles. Because this is the probability of A and not B, it is the part where both of them were marked, and that is the only A part. This means that the probability of A and not B means the same as the probability of only A. This will then be 0, 0,32. Lastly, we need to remember that this complete rectangle is a probability of 1, and that means that if we take 1 and subtract the 0, 0,32, 0, 0,08 and 0, 0,12, we will have 0, 0,48 on the outside of these two events. Now that we have completed our Venn diagram, we can go back to the question 
which is to determine the probability of A or B. And as mentioned earlier, this is then A and B, everything together, because or means union. So this will be the 0, 0,32 of only A, the 0, 0,08 of A and B, and the 0, 0,12 of only B. So we will have a probability of 0, 0,52. Question B. Are A and B independent? I'm reminding you that to check for independence, we need to determine whether the probability of A and B will be the same as the probability of A multiplied by the probability of B. The left-hand side, which is the probability of A and B, is given as 0, 0,08. Now we need to determine whether the probability of A multiplied by the probability of B will also be 0, 0,08. The probability of A is the complete circle A and that is 0, 0,4 because it's the 0, 0,32 plus 0, 0,08. This we're going to multiply with the probability of B which was given as 0, 0,2 or you can once again determine the full circle B. When I multiply these two values, I will also get 0, 0,08. Now I can make the conclusion that the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side, and therefore these two events are independent. In the next video, we'll have a look at a real-life example.